everyone. Welcome to Chris TV. Another Modern Work Summit update uh, with one of the guest speakers that we have at Modern Work Summit. If you haven't checked out Modern Work Summit, go to modernworksummit.com. Uh, 23rd, 24th of May. I've been saying that every time. I'm hoping that's right. Um, and we have got uh, Sean Wargo from Avixa. Sean, how are you doing? Great, Neil. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. So uh, tell us, what do you do at Vixer? And then well, I guess, what do a Vixer do for those who have been sleeping in a dark room and, and just think that you do trade shows and you just do ISC and Infocom? What do you do for the rest of the year? Sure, that's fair. So I'm Vice President of Market Intelligence at Avixa, which by the title, you can uh, see that we are a little bit more than trade shows. We're also perhaps known for education, CTS. Back in about 2018, I came into Avixa to expand and improve upon our market intelligence offerings. So we've got a number of different research series now covering macroeconomics, industry outlook, um, demand side studies, all that sort of stuff. So it gives us a great uh, portfolio product to kind of look at what's happening in Pro AV, where are the trends, where are the opportunities for integrator, installer, and manufacturer. Uh, and so obviously, uh, hence why we've got you on stage at the Modern Work Summit in Madrid. Now, your session, uh, I wrote it down, the outlook of hybrid world uh, work and the role AV has to play in that. So I'm guessing you're just going to be telling us how we can throw kit at the problem and, and that's going <laughs> to solve it. It's going to be a short session, right? <laughs> Certainly, you've just described pro AV, right? There you I mean, go. Yeah, so throwing some kit at some, Big telly. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, you know, and that, that is certainly a part of the of the message that we want to bring is uh, where we've all been talking about the return to office, the kind of mix between flexible and in office, uh, which we've called hybrid, uh, mm. for, for lack of a better term. Uh, but yeah, the idea is where are we in that journey? Obviously, a different story as you look at geographics, so North America versus Europe versus Asia. But at the end of that, it's how does Pro AV as an industry kind of support what's happening at a company level uh, as companies kind of work through how many days of an office, um, how do they support those that are remote? How do you get equity of experience? Clearly, there is a technology angle to that, right? So it is somewhat about kit uh, and how spaces are equipped to handle it, how offices are configured spatially, uh, all that sort of stuff, how content is managed to kind of allow for collaboration, distribution, that sort of stuff. So that's what we'll talk about in my session. We'll kind of use some macroecon to set the stage of where we are on uh, return to office and or hybrid work, and then get into the opportunity we see for pro AV, meaning yes, for manufacturers and distributors for uh, selling and manufacturing product producing, and then for integrators, kind of what there is, what their opportunity is for consulting with companies and then bringing in installing integrating technology. Uh, so yeah, lots to talk about uh, heady, extensive topic, uh, but certainly a lot going on there as a big driver for pro AV. Yeah, and it's not just we're not just talking about video conferencing or you know Teams and Zoom here. Oh, we? we're talking you, we, again. You're saying the wider AV, you know, again, so digital signage, uh, wayfinding, you know, hot desking, all all of that equipment, not just you know webcams and and uh, Zoom and Teams devices. Hundred percent true. Yeah, I think conference and collaboration. Literally, we would think about perhaps more of the Zoom uh, and Teams integrations. But you know, pre-pandemic, it was about mic arrays, speakers. Um, collaboration displays, uh, whether projection or some sort of video wall, that's all part of it. But what the pandemic really showed is there's tremendous opportunity beyond that. So seeing a lot of opportunity in uh, broadcast type capabilities, streaming. Uh, so harnessing doing this content stuff. <laughs> like we're doing here, <laughs> yeah, right? Absolutely. Like we're doing right now. Yeah, for sure. So it's companies still wanting to engage with customers, audiences, et cetera, mm. uh, standing up capability. We're, I know even... Uh, in our case, right, as a VIXA, we we have space allocated now for just content capture, green okay. screens, better lighting, better nice. miking, uh, that sort of stuff. I'm not in that room today, but uh, certainly Sound something we have good. available. Don't worry. All good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and you mentioned, so obviously you've got a, a North American twang. We were talking about twangs in the green room before we press record. Yes. But um, you mentioned the uh, North America, EMEA and, and Asia Pack. I mean, clearly you're based in North America. But, uh, VIXA is a, an international global company. Company, uh, covering the globe so again are you seeing as a, a teaser as a hint you know do you see that there are differences obviously we're doing modern work summit in madrid what are you seeing as a difference between uh, north america and amir maybe yeah i mean if you pull back right the the real estate market and situation is very different across the globe and so that that sets the context for whether and how uh, companies can actually go remote or need to be more in office you know we 
it, what we see in the data certainly is in North America, US particularly, there is a lot more emphasis on, on remote work. Well, houses trend bigger. There's more space on average. Uh, so that's a factor, right? We also have an overbuild though, on the other hand of office space. So uh, there's this kind of uh, conflict, you could call it, between uh, how much we uh, have remote work versus bringing them into the offices of which there are, there are plenty. And then as you go across different um, uh, parts of the globe, you have other factors like co corporate culture, uh, country um, dynamics about what's just sort of expected about uh, workers and where they are and how much they're in office. Um, so that does differ for sure uh, across the globe too. So it, I think though, at the end, wherever you are, there has been technology has enabled the possibility of not always just being in an office space. We're able to do so much more remotely, and so even that being a, be a, being awakened to that from a corporate enterprise perspective just means that this is a, a new a disruptive trend that we'll be accounting for across different parts of the world. And at the end, it's it's a technology thing. Whether you're in office all the time, um, most of the time or not, uh, there still will be those times where you're not. And collaborating across geographies means we have to have flexible solutions. We have to have the ability to get people connected in, in equitable ways, right? And, ha and uh, have a good experience in doing that. So yeah. it's, it's a universal trend. Yeah. You, you talk about, about workplace. What about the, the people? Again, have you done any stats between the difference between a you know, the Gen Zs, the millennials, they're not really called millennials now, that's that's kind of an old thing, but you know, they're, they're, the millennials are now kind of in the workforce, you know, we were talking about five, 10 years ago, but um, you know, were you seeing something on the different dynamics of the different uh, ages of, of user types, you know, from, again, the more senior um, people in the organization, I don't know what the right term is, but down to the mm -hmm. kind of uh, younger people coming into the organization and how they're adopting the, the technology? Yeah, so what, one of the things that's been interesting uh, to look at some of the research out there is there might have been this expectation that the newer employee, let's call them younger generation, millennial, uh, mm -hmm. to use the older term, um, would have been more interested in kind of remote work uh, possibility. They embrace the technology, they sort of get it. But actually what you find is it's somewhat the opposite. So um, when you have kids, elders to take care of, you have more needs uh, to try to, to balance. Uh, and so your request for, say, a remote work might actually be more uh, mm. than the younger who's who's actually looking for a social connection. So we've seen this across trade shows, too, where we would have thought eh, the new way of doing business as per millennial and, and Gen Y or Gen Z, uh, whatever it might be, you know, they'd be like, ah, we just want to stay home. We want to do it from here. We want to have flexibility. No, in fact, they still want to get together witness concerts, you know, as an example of this that have been really uh, recovering uh, rapidly over the last year. Right. So I think that's that's the human element, right? There still is that. There still is that that desire. So how do companies play up on that? How do they build that, that need for social networking uh, kind of into work week? Um, how do they facilitate it through space design? Those are, those are questions being asked yeah. and tech will play a role. Very so, cool. yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, top three reasons or top three things you're going to cover in your session. Why should people come to uh, Modern Work Summit from you and catch your session? Give us your top three. Yeah. Other than seeing you I and me, we, obviously. Right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, for sure. Um, well, I think we covered a couple of this. So it, it really is, where are we? Where are we on this journey of this kind of remote? Where are we kind of settling out in terms of that hybrid work mode? Uh, and then secondarily, what is that meant for how technology, how companies are approaching it from a tech perspective kind of currently? And then last but not least is that long range. Where are we going from here? Are we, are we sort of flatlining, declining because the investments have been made? Or is there secondary tertiary waves yet to come uh, as companies kind of invest again and improve upon uh, as part of that? Is it more of an OPEX story? So those would be the kinds of things that we'll, that we'll look at in right. the session. Very cool. Uh, Sean, thank you for joining us on this episode of Crest TV, updating on the Modern Work Summit. I will see you in Madrid, uh, 23rd, 24th, uh, and I'll be uh, introducing you on stage. So um, look forward to seeing you there. Uh, and thank you for joining us on this session. Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Neil. Look awesome. forward to seeing you there. Very cool. And thank you all for tuning in to this uh, update on the Modern Work Summit here on Crest TV from Crestron. Uh, join us every Thursday. Regular updates from us here on the AV, UC and what's going on in Crestron. Ring the bell, hit subscribe and all, do all that good YouTube stuff and we will catch you on the next one.